Hello, my name is Barbara Burns. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Art and Soul Insider. This is our creation time. This is our time to put the world away and just be, and just to play, and to find relaxation, and just to kind of have your moment of zen for yourself. So if that's what you're looking for today, please hang on and watch what's following. And what's following is I've got a really neat supply for you. Um, it's watercolor, but it's a little bit different. And then I've got um, a guided meditation for you. And then after that, we've got a wonderful, colorful little project we're going to do. The background's going to be full of color and with some leaves on top, which will be really pretty. And to end it all off, we'll sum it up with uh, Oracle Cards by Rebecca Campbell. It's called the Star Seed Oracle. So if you're interested in that, please hang on. And if you're interested again, thumbs up. Your likes and your subscribing would be wonderful. So I really would appreciate that. So let's get going. So today's supply is Stradler's Double Ended Watercolor Brush Pens. They're really, really nice. They I got the the uh, set with 36. I just love colors. So I love when I see something like this, I just start salivating. <laughs> so anyways, here they are. Okay, so double ended. One is going to be the brush end. Or this is the brush end. A little thicker. Okay. And here is the pen end. So you just go ahead and you put your color down or you can do your detailing with color like that. Put the lids on so we keep the, the color in there. And I'm going to So it does spread a little bit. It's not as great as I'd find the um, uh, watercolor pencils. Like this just is, is lasting a little too too long and you know, it's really kind of saturated in here. But I love it for the details. See this? See how your lines are still visible? So you could do something like bird's feathers and it would still show up. The, each feather-like stroke that you used. So this is perfect for sketching, okay? This is perfect for if you're doing an illustration or whatever. So an example here on the back, they kind of show, they have this bird here, right? So on the back, and it's really small, but here they've got the sketch, okay? Then they've got them putting the watercolor uh, pencil down or pen, and then they have it watered out. So you see the difference? Okay, a lot more intense in the color. So that's what I would use these for. I'd use them for detailing, and that's what I'm going to be using them today for. And or I'd be using them for, um, as, as they mentioned, more sketching and more just playing around. But you can, I mean, you can do really wonderful pieces of artwork with this just as well, you know? So think about it. It's the Stradler Double-Ended Watercolor Brush Pens. Okay, we're going to begin our guided meditation. So I have a picture in front of you that I did. It was uh, another class I did, not on YouTube, but other places, uh, such as Facebook Live. Um, this is, if you're interested in this type of work, and this has a semic writing on top of it, if you're interested in seeing a type of work like this, please let me know in the comments because I would love to be able to do that for you. Um, I really enjoyed that, playing with this, and I actually use some of it in my work. So there you go. So sit back and relax and close your eyes. Picture a relaxing place, like a beach, a mountaintop, 
a forest, or anywhere you find peace. Imagine what you see, hear, smell in your imagined oasis and start to breathe in slowly, allowing the air to fill your lungs. Hold your breath for a moment and then slowly release your breath as you continue to picture your surroundings. So with your surroundings in your mind of your imagined place, breathe in, hold, and release. Breathe in, hold, and release. Breathe in, hold, and release. What do you see? What do you hear or smell in your imagined oasis? As you take another breath, feel any tension you're holding on to drain from your muscles. So breathe in, and as you breathe out, sigh. <sighs> breathe in, release and sigh. <sighs> Breathe in, release, <sighs> as you breathe in and out, let go any negative thoughts of the day. Free your mind of worry as you continue to place and picture your happy place. Draw from the serenity of the moment. Allow the calmness of your imagined oasis to wash away your worries and drain the tension from your muscles. Feel the washing away of your worries. Feel the draining of the tension from your muscles. So visit here again whenever you like to relax and instill a sense of calm. You can also visit other areas you find relaxing. The choice is yours. But remember, you can always come back for an escape from the tension and the stress of everyday life. There you go. So open your eyes. I find this, this one works so well in the fact that it's short and sweet. And it's something that we can really use in our own everyday life where we can actually take these moments and just imagine our happy place. Where is our place where we find calm or imagine calm? So you say, I don't know where I, anywhere in my life. Well, imagine it and just see it and see and really get into the place. See what's surrounding you. Hear, can you hear birds? Can you hear people? Can you hear waves? Can you hear the wind whistling in the trees? You know, those type of things. And what does it smell like? What does it smell? Do you smell something cooking in the air? Do you smell freshness of the air being outside? Do you smell the salt in the air if you're up by a beach on the ocean? Those type of things getting all your senses involved really kind of helps ground 
that sensation into your system. And then just breathe. Be aware of the situation, your surroundings as such. And then just breathe yourself into it and relax. With each breath, have the tension release. With each breath, breath have the um, worries just melt away. That is just such a simple but effective way of doing it. So anytime you feel stressed, anytime you feel that you don't have a moment, then just take this moment and do this. Okay, I, it will really help. I know it's helped me, so I hope it helps you as well. So there you go. Okay, here we go. I got a brand new media book. So um, just making room here. <laughs> so I finished my other one. And so I thought, well, what a better way to, than to start a new one. This one is by Strathmore. The other one I had, um, it was by, oh, it was by Strathmore, but it was called Visual Journal. This one is just Strathmore Mixed Media. Um, it says it has a vellum surface, so it's smoother, okay? Um, it's acid-free, medium weight. It's mixed medium sketches, wet and dry medium. It has 40 sheets in total, which had more sheets than the other that I was looking at. This is 9 by 12, and it is 117 pound paper, which is 119 gram per meter squared. So there we go. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to tape up my, my image. I love having crisp lines. It's just something so exciting when I peel back the tape. <laughs> funny huh simple little simple little things like that bring me joy I think it's a good idea to try and remind yourself of what things bring you joy because um, a lot of times we get so involved in life that we can kind of forget what what truly brings us happiness I think I got this it's hard to see with the lines with uh, the other paper but it's good enough okay so supplies naturally you're going to need some tape uh this is painter's tape that actually um lifts but doesn't rip your paper as much as i find masking tape does now what you can do to take down the stickiness of a paper is just you know stick it to yourself a few times stick it to yourself that's funny anyways <laughs> stick it to yourself a few times and then voila okay so that can help as well so we need tape i'm going to be using my kurtaki watercolors i'm going to be using a lot of warm colors today so i'm going to be using the reds the one orange i have but I mean, I can make oranges naturally with combining the red and the yellow together and yellows. And I might bring in a burgundy red wine, wine, a wine burgundy. And maybe I, I want a purple, but I, have, I forget seeing which one is purple. Cobalt violet. There we go. Is this purple as well? Imperial violet. Yes, that's a purple as well. Good. How about this one? Blue green. Blue, blue gray deep. No, so, okay. So these three I'm going to be using. So that's with that. Then I'm going to, I've my, got my Kurtaki, um golds and silvers. If you don't have this, you can use a gel pen. That is perfectly good enough. And the supply that I shared with you earlier, that's a strad Stradler, <laughs> my goodness, um, double-ended watercolor brush pens. 
And I'm going to, and I might not use them, but my watercolor pencil crayons. I don't have very many of them, but what I have, they get used. So there you go. So that's what we're going to do. Naturally, brushes and water and that type of stuff. So that is necessary. So uh, I'm going to put this away for right now because I won't need it for a bit. I'm um, wondering about my... You're missing a little bit of it on the bottom. Yeah. You're missing... Well, that's... You're missing... A, uh, oh, you know what I'm going to do? Maybe do it sideways. There. Perfect. That worked out well. Okay. There we go. Um, yeah. So brushes, water, we're set. Now I'm wanting the colors really to be intense. So I am going to be using, um, a brush with very little water. Well, it'll have water in it. Yes. But what you're hearing now is I'm just spraying these. Sometimes I spray my kurtakis, which means they get them nice and moist and they're ready for water. These are called kind of semi-moist, so you don't need a whole lot of water to activate them, but um, and you don't need to spray them, but I'm going to spray them today. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to I'm going to bring my brushes closer. My brushes, my brushes, my water. Okay. So let's bring some yellow. Oh, this brush is kind of dirty. So I've got a variety of reds. What if you don't have a variety of reds? Well, what you can do, you can make them. And what I would do is if I didn't have the variety of reds that I do and the yellows, I would actually just take a um, palette, okay? And I would take my red and I would add yellow to it, a little bit of yellow, and then a lot more yellow to one. So that, and therefore you could still have your reds, but they would be completely, completely different. They, they would have their essence to them, but very different. So you'd still have the color. but a little bit different. So how do you know what colors to, to mix? I don't have my color wheel with me, but the closest one to red is orange, and then it's a red, red blue kind of thing, okay? So that's where you get kind of this kind of Violets kind of thing happening, red wine kind of thing. So naturally, if you add equal amounts of red and yellow, you're going to get an orange, right? Oh, 
so I kind of have all my colors there um, kind of mixed in now say with your purples okay you want to change your 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 blues so you have your blues you start out with your blues add a little bit of red add a little bit more red and then if you add the equal amount of red with blue you're going to end up with a purple okay on the other side of the blue you can add some yellow so then you can add a little bit of yellow a little bit more yellow and then you're going to get a green okay but you can still alter these colors so that you can still have the color red but it will change because because um it, you're adding a little bit of another color in it so that that's the beautiful thing of color mixing i just i love seeing the colors i can make with certain ones yeah so so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this to the blow dryer so just give me a moment and we'll be right back so how you can tell it is dry by putting your hand on it now before you put your hand on it, see if there's any little shiny spots. I have a few. I have one here, here, and here. Those are still wet, okay? Those had kind of a pool of water and paint. So I won't put my hands there because that'll lift the paint. But the rest of this place, it's dry. Okay, so I'm going to take a palette and I'm going to be making my leaves kind of like silhouettes they're going to look dark so i'm going to take them take a purple and a blue and i think this is black yes that's black so um let's So I'm going to take the dark colors, dark purple, or dark purple. I knew it was a blue, but I, I was thinking of purple, <laughs> bringing purple in, but, and I knew it was blue, but I mixed it up and that happens. <laughs> so now I'm going to take in some purple. There we go. It's more like an indigo right now. So there's my color. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of black. My water is quite brown. So when your water gets brown, that means time to clean up. But because I'm not, not near a sink, makes it kind of hard. I, I'm downstairs in my basement. Uh, my studio is kind of in that spot. So in, in a spot in the basement and we don't have running water to the basement because it's an unfinished basement. So, so I'm taking a smaller brush. This is a number eight, but you know, with other watercolor brushes, I'd say maybe it'd be a six, you know, a six or an eight. So I'm going to This is a little too watery. I might take a black and just, which I did just kind of dip it in. My, my line was there a little wobbly. So I'm going to So I'm pushing down on my, and then lifting up, up on the top, 
pushing down and then raising it. down, up, push down, and up. Are you seeing where I, you are? I just want to make sure that you can see what I'm drawing. I get so wrapped up sometimes with my own little world of painting, which is a good thing, but it's not so good when you're you're filming. <laughs> Again, this isn't a tutorial as such. This is more me playing, and I'm hoping you're playing along with me. Um, because that's the whole idea of your relaxation is that you can relax by doing and yeah it's a it's a good thing and that maybe you'll do a few times without me right so push it down come up push down and come up Oops, I made that a big, big stem coming from that leaf. Oh, well. Be gentle with yourself, remember? I love the background. It looks so much fun and melding and stuff like that. The thing is, though, um, one thing I wish could change and someone might have meant it some sometime in the future the vibrancy when it's wet i wish it would remain you know i just love it oops my 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 leaves kind of splayed out with my brush there. I'm wondering if I can make it bigger. There we go. Cover it up a bit. There. So sometimes with your mistakes, you can cover them up. So the key is when you make a mistake, don't be hard on yourself. Um, you know, it's so easy to be hard on ourselves, right? But I think it's important that we, like right there, I was doing stuff and I did little things. So now I want little lines to kind of come out. We could do one like here, but then this would be kind of empty. So how I'm maybe doing one like that. Yeah, so I'm going to turn my page around. This week I work um, part time at um, a, in the hospital, in the long-term care unit. Um, I'm a, a recreation assistant. 
Um, I used to be a teacher, um, but I had cancer. And so what happened is I took an early retirement because I was of the age if I wanted to. Um, and, but I found out I just missed being with others. I missed having an impact in the fact that, you know, touching people's lives in a positive way. I, you know, I knew that I was doing it through my art and this and that, but I, I love doing it with the person, like, you know, that you're, you're right there with them. So, uh, this job came up and I was like, this is perfect. So I put it out in the universe and, uh, uh, really kind of did guided visualizations and all that with it, seeing myself in the job and lo and behold, I got the job and I even got a signing bonus with it. So I was very fortunate with that and uh, very pleased with that. And then I um, started working there uh, last September, but yeah, it was. So, but it, I just um, love the people. I love, I guess I love love, you know, that's just who I am. I just, um, means a great deal to me um, to love someone and to be able to help them. Um, you know, and that's why I do what I do here on the YouTube is, you know, uh, yes, I'd like to make money, but at the same time, I do this because I love to do it. And I love being able to help someone, you know, and if this can help someone relax, to find time for themselves, to be good to themselves, um, Oh, I'm all for it. So anyways, I have this job um, part-time. And so the days that I'm not working, I'm working on my um, art business as such. And uh, then from there, I, I work, uh, work at the hospital. So it's kind of time is divided, which I don't mind keeps me on my toes. <laughs> but with this, um, you know, I just love having, as I mentioned, an impact. So last week we went to the seniors, um, seniors place or center because they were having a pancake breakfast. So we thought the residents would like that. So we took some of the residents and yes, they did. You know, they were just, you know, it's so nice just to get out of the hospital and to um, just being, you know, going outside for a drive, you know, things we take for granted, like so much, like, of you know, being out driving and uh, seeing the community and, you know, even going to the store and stuff like that, we... I think we can take it for granted a lot of times, uh, just how special that is. So, especially for these people. So I was able to take them to the pancake breakfast with, with my partner that I work with. And, um, we went and they, they just loved it. And, uh, you know, they, they loved the food and the fact that it wasn't hospital food <laughs> and uh, all that. And, uh, you know, some of them were active members in their community. And lo and behold, what happens is people see them out and they all come and talk to them. So some of them were just really busy just talking with people. And, and it was really, really cool to see. You know, I just thought that was so neat. Just, you know, a lot of times we can, we don't know a person really, uh, unless we actually know about them or know of their lives. So, uh, you know, I was able to observe and see this, you know, interaction between themselves and other people in the community and just, 
you know, saying hello to old friends and the people you used to work with and just special moments like that, you know, that before they were able to do all that. So, so right now I'm taking a wine color and I'm doing a little circles, like little berries. Oh, I forgot to do little, little, um, little jets. So doing little berry clusters right now. So and this is with the wine color. So you see that? It's kind of a wine. It's it's a blue with a red. So, you know, it just working with them just makes me see how fortunate I am. I mean, I have my disability and the fact that I have a growth on my spine. And, you know, it, it's challenging at times, but at the same time, um, you know, I'm much more mobile. I can drive my car and do things like that, that these other people can't do. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I feel very, very fortunate that I'm able to do things like that. Um, I'm going to take some red. I'm, oh, I'm going to take some of that mark, those markers, uh, watercolor brush pens. I'm going to take a red, I think I'm going to take this red, the one I exampled with. And I'm going to turn this around. Oh, we got a little blossom there. Oh, well. I'm just going to create little... This just creates a little visual interest. So you could do this with a watercolor pencil. You could do this also with your watercolor brush. Make sure it's a smaller, thinner one, right? I mean, you can get some to a really nice point. And so you're able to do this, so that would work out nice. I think I'm going to do is take an orange one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use the pencil part.
again, this is just adding some visual interest. But, you know, it's, it's kind of going back to what I was sharing about the uh, people I work with um, in the long-term care facility. You know, we just have to be so mindful of our, you know, of our blessings. And we have so many. You know, that's why, um, and I, I've gotten away from writing it down. But before I used to take like a a day timer type of thing, uh, you know, with a day of each, each week. And I would write down three things that I was grateful for that day. And it was wonderful. And like now I'm at the end of the day, I, I do this, but you know, what's really important though. And I found, and I, I need to get back to writing it down. Because sometimes you have those really bad days. And some days, it's just like, I'm thankful I'm breathing. I guess that's one of them. You know what I mean? Like, you're just really at a loss. It's just a bad, bad day. It was during those bad days that I would actually look inside my gratitude little journal that I'd created. And... Look at and see what things I was grateful for. And it would boost my mood. I would see that I was loved. I would see the, the goodness and the happiness that's in the world. You know, that things that make you laugh or things you find funny, things you find uh, touching. You know, all those things would just come up. And it was just really a wonderful thing. So I highly recommend you do that. I, you know, I'm going to actually do that today. I'm going to go and get a um, little journal, a day journal, you know, that you could, has enough space for me to write down three things that I'm grateful for. And I'll do that. Where did I start that? There. Okay. So I'm just going to I'm going to darken this a bit more, thicken it up. So it's a bit more visual. I think I'll outline them too. So yeah, I highly recommend that. It's a beautiful thing. some stuff over here so I'm going to do some berries and things like that over there I'm going to use my pens as well so let's try hmm this one this berry maybe that'll be a berry color let's try that out and see if it works Yeah, 
so I think we need to be every day be grateful for you know our mobility for what what we can move um you know as I mentioned I'm I have a disability with a growth on my spine that really affects my mobility. Uh, most people wouldn't know that I'm in pain or that I, um, they might not see it in my walk if they observed it. Um, but, but yeah, it's, um, but you know, just to be thankful. I'm thankful that I can still walk. I mean, you know, when they had that operation on me, it wasn't, well, he was more concerned that I'd die on the table with my, my back operation, not that I'd be paralyzed. So, um, yeah, so, but, you know, I can walk, I can move, I am able to use my hands to do art, you know, what a thank you, thank you, thank you, you know? What a gift. What a gift. I'm going to do some now with the good old... Um, Oh, I guess it does go there. Okay. With um, paint, because you see how these look different, okay? I want to have some more of these in here because then it'll give it a greater sense of unity and it'll work together a bit more. I'm combining these two colors together, the wine, which is that color, and the purple, which is that color. So I'm combining those two together. Um, where can I put them? Put some here. I'm going to put some purple dashes here. some gold. Bring some gold in here too. So I actually have some gold here in this Kurtaki set here. Um, but do I want to, you know, I guess I could use that or, I, or I've got this whole big Kurtaki set with more. But I think the I think I like, excuse me, as I take a drink of water. Um, wondering which one to use. Well, I'm wanting something brighter and shiny. Shiny, 
I'm a little crow. <laughs> So yesterday we went into the city. I live in a small town in northern Alberta, which is it's a beautiful little town. It has about 3,000 people in it. It uh, has a river uh, beside it, running through it. Not running through it. Yeah, it would be more beside. But just a beautiful little, little town. Anyways, um... So I go to the city and, you know, when you live in the country, um, you live, you know, and you, you survive with what whatever you're needing to survive with and all sorts of stuff. But then you, um, you need, you need other things sometimes. And sometimes you can order it in from the city. And sometimes you have to go get it. So yesterday I was able to, I had day off from work, both of my works, <laughs> and uh, went into town. And it was wonderful because my partner was able to come with me and he and I just had a lovely, lovely day. We went out for lunch and we got like, we had a huge list that uh, when we started, and uh, we we traveled the city, I tell you, <laughs> and we got everything that we needed, and it was it was good. Very tiring day. And then what we do is um, we have the, these stores called Costco, and if you're from the states, you'd know Costco, anyways. But uh, so we went to Costco and got our three weeks supply of stuff, and. Uh, yeah, it was good. Expensive, but good. Boy, have I noticed the difference between prices. They're really, um, really getting up there. Have you noticed that as well? Things are just getting a little pricier. Those were, those have some slants on them. Let's try and remedy that by doing some straight up and down. There we go. There. So these can be little berries. So actually one thing I forgot to get was a uh, black pen. So we'll have these join. So now I'm going to take the blow dryer again. I'm going to outline 
these berries that I did with the pen. I'm just going to outline them. So I'm going to flip it over because some things are still wet here. So we're just going to flip, flipsy, and just outline. If it's not a perfect outline, I'm okay. Also going to one thing I forgot to mention I think I'm gonna use a gel pen that's what happens when you start working you go oh you know I'm gonna add this I'm gonna add that so so I'm gonna get my gold pen because the reason I'm going for my gold pen is because we've got gold already happening here so, find my gold pen. There we are. And we're going to do some... It needs a little bit more of something, doesn't it? Well, I've got dots, so let's do some dots. I'm going to go up, down, because then I'm not going to smudge them. Less likely of smudging. So what adds unity to a piece is sometimes repeating elements. So one element that I used was circles, okay? So there's circles here, there's circles here, circles here, circles here, circles here, circles on here, okay? Where have I used some dashes? Well, the dashes are here, okay? They're also in these little juts that you have coming out. And um, then also I use the same elements such as black, okay? Black is a color, so then I use the black outline, okay? Gold, I use the gold here, use the gold there, use the gold here. So that seems to help as well. So, so it's those type of elements that work well with a, a piece. So, and that's what gives it a sense of unity because your eye's saying, oh, I've seen that before. So, and because of that, then your eye goes, okay, that works. It's time to unzip, <laughs> unmask. Okay.
Come on. <laughs> Let's try it this way. And there we go. There's our final piece. Oh, I love un un unmasking it. So much fun. A lot of fun with that one. Yeah. So it's very much expressiveness dur in, during um, the background. And then we became a little bit more well, focused on, on doing things specifically. So again, it's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, there we go. So with that, we are done. So next part is the Oracle card. Next part is Oracle card, as I mentioned <laughs> about two seconds ago. So this is the Star Seed Oracle. It is a um, 53 card deck and it comes with the guidebook and it's by Rebecca Campbell and the artwork, which I love them having the art artists being front and center. <laughs> uh, the artwork is by Danielle Noel. So very cool. So the cards look something like this, really nice background. And the guidebook is basically like the outside. So I'm going to be doing this, uh, drawing a card for one of us that is watching this. So that could be you right now or someone in the future. Um, there's also, also the possibility, and granted, it, it could be worth uh, valuable for more than one person, right? <laughs> so it could be for the group of us as a whole and things that we're we're looking for and uh, needing in our lives so this gar card will help give us a little direction and your and what i know is that your intuition will then take it take it from there and and you'll head on your way so um oh i didn't pick a card there I'll just do another one i guess So, this is Double Mission. Lightworker, starseed, serve the world by being you. Ooh, that sounds good. Put on my glasses for this. Double Mission. Oh, there it is. Double Mission. Lightworker. See, star seed, serve the world by being you. Like worker star seeds are mission and purpose oriented. Many have the feeling that time is running out and there's something they came here to do, contribute or create. They're here to grow as souls individually on an individual mission and also to contribute to the planet in some action oriented way. So a collective mission. Their collective mission is often answered through a career calling or by devoting their life to something bigger. Until they remember their collective mission, it can feel as if something's missing or they're forgetting about something important. It's common for light worker star seeds to feel that they're different and they may carry soul memories of being visible or sharing their voice. As such, they may protect themselves by dimming their light in order to fit in or by spending time in some sort of closet, such as a spiritual closet. If you pull this card, you're being called to remember your collective mission and step into it even more fully. You're being reminded that your role as a light worker is here to light up the world with your presence. 
This doesn't have to be a great big thing or a decision you need to make. You also don't need to have a great big plan. If you resonate with being a light worker, all you need to do is work out what lights you up, your passions and joys, and keep doing that. When you trust and follow the simple path of things that light you up, then lose yourself in the doing. You'll light up the world without even trying. Starseed Soul Inquiry is how can you serve the world by being you? Wow. Good reminder that you're here to light up the world with your presence. And it doesn't have to be something big. It doesn't have to be something big. It could be just something very simple. But it lights you up while you do it. And you make an impact on others. That's wonderful. Really wonderful. Well, there we go. We're done another day. So thank you so much for coming and being here for yourself. Um, it's like a well. You're like a well that if you give and give and give, soon the well will run dry and there's nothing left. But if you give from an abundance that you take in and you do things that are good for yourself like this that we this time that we had here um you know things that fill you up that light you up then what can happen is then you have a surplus and you can give to others from the surplus the extra that's overflowing from you just like a will so with that um i again hope hope you enjoyed the guided meditation a very simple meditation, but you can do at a drop of a hat. And I hope you liked the supply. You know, maybe that interests you in, in purchasing that. And so you could play with them. Uh, you never know. You, you might love it. And then the, I hope you really had fun uh, doing the, guy, the, the project. I think with the project, we did a whole bunch of colors and we added detail and did line work and it was a combination of a whole bunch of different things. So with that, and I hope you enjoyed the card, um, the double mission that you're here uh, to find out what lights you up and then in turn do that. So I send you off with warm wishes of love and light and just greatest of wishes that this week is everything you dreamed of. So with that, take care. Love you. Bye-bye.